praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone joining us on this program. This is the Fountain of Israel's Bible Studies program, and it's an honor for me to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. Now, today's lesson is called Love Thy Neighbor. Now, if you've been watching us for some time, you know, every now and again, we'll take a shot here at, you know, at the Roman Catholic Church or the Protestants and, 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 and try to correct some of the doctrine that's out there. OK, but I'm going to give credit where credit is due, because one of the things that they actually talk about is love. Now, we're going to look at some biblical examples of love and what we're supposed to be doing, because I know sometime we get in and we start pounding the table with the commandments and we need to be obedient. And we do. OK, but all that needs to manifest itself. It needs to manifest itself in our character. It needs to manifest itself in our behavior. And we want to look at it from a biblical perspective. See, it's more than just a feeling. Because anyone can have a feeling. But see, love is what we're going to find out is also an action word. And we need to get that down in us. It needs to be reflected in who we are. It needs to be reflected in our character. And so we're going to begin this lesson over in John 13. Let's look at John 13. And we will pick it up at verse 34. Okay, this is one of this is an actual commandment. It's not a suggestion. We're actually commanded to love one another. Because we can't say we love one another without some sort of action. Let me give you an example. We can't say, you can't say to your wife, honey, I love you, but I'm not going to work. I'm not going to pay any bills. I'm not going to protect you. I'm not going to provide for you. I'm not going to hold you. I'm not going to touch you. I'm not going to do anything, but I love you. Chances are she doesn't believe you. Why? You said the words. You said the words. You said, I love you. But why didn't she believe you? Because the actions doesn't back up your words. The words become hollow. So let's go ahead and take a look at this right now at John 13. Okay? Let's look at this commandment. In John 13, we're going to pick it up at verse 34. And when you get that, brother, go ahead and read. A new commandment I give unto you. Yes. That ye love one another mm -hmm. as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. That ye also love one another. Now, is this a suggestion or is this a, a new commandment? And he's just saying it in a new way because it, it, it was love from the beginning, brothers and sisters. OK, it was love from the beginning. It's Thirty five. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Mm -hmm. If ye have loved one to an, another. Mm -hmm. si oh. OK, no, no. We're going to stop at thirty five. Now, that's OK. Let's go up two chapters to John 15. OK, go to John 15, chapter 15. And then we'll pick that up at. 11 okay pick that up at 11 John 15 and 11 and when you get that brother go ahead and read these things have I spoken unto you mm -hmm. that my joy might remain in you mm -hmm. and that your joy might be full what's that this is my commandment uh -huh. that ye love one another mm -hmm. as I have loved you now does anyone need an interpretation of that not really but we're going to go into some into some details as we move forward, that's a commandment that we have that we should love one another. Now, we're going to get into what that looks like. OK, now go ahead and read um, 13 for me, brother. Greater love hath no man than this, mm -hmm. that a man lay down his life for his friends. Is that the kind of love that you have? Is that the capacity? OK, so that's what we have to understand. OK, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Christ did that, didn't he? Yes, he did. Okay. Okay, now he says he's going to read 14. Ye are my friends mm -hmm. if you do whatsoever I command okay, you. Okay, so now he had identified who is his friends. Okay, but we're going to go further. Go to Matthew 22. Let's go to Matthew 22. We're going to deal we're going to deal with this commandment. We're going to deal with some of these commandments. Matthew 22 and I would like to pick it up at verse 27 cuz a lot of times people like to get away from, you know, the commandments 
and they say, well, you know, all we got to do is love. That's all. That's all. That's all we need. That's the only commandment we need. But we're going to unpack that for a second. Read Matthew uh, chapter 22 and let's start it at 37, brother. 22 and 37, if you don't mind. Jesus said unto him, mm -hmm. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart mm -hmm. and with all thy soul mm -hmm. and with all thy mind. Mm -hmm. This is the first and great commandment. Now, now remember, I want you guys, I want you guys to understand something. See, someone came to him. I'm gonna go up right here to uh, 34, and it says, "But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, a lawyer in the in in, in the the Torah in the Tanakh, okay, one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law?" OK, so they were just tempting him, testing him, wanting to see. Let's see what this guy's going to say. And then he said, go ahead and read uh, 36 again, bro, 37. I'm sorry. Again, Jesus said unto him, mm -hmm. thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart mm -hmm. and with all thy soul mm -hmm. and with all thy mind. Continue. This is the first and great commandment. Thirty nine. And the second is like unto it. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. What he say in 40. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay, so some people say, okay, well, see, that's all we have to do. See, if we just love, that's it. We're done. But remember, they asked him something in the law. So it's not so new. Now, let's take a look at that real quick. Now, he said to love thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. That's the first commandment. The second is love thy neighbor as thyself. Let's see where he got that from, shall we? Okay, so let's go over to Deuteronomy 6. Meet me over in Deuteronomy 6, the fifth book of the Bible. Deuteronomy 6. Let's take a look at this. That'll be Davarim 6. And that'll be chapter 6, verse 5. Chapter 6, verse 5. Let's see what, who, what Christ was quoting. Chapter 6 and 5. Go ahead, brother. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, mm -hmm. and with all thy soul, mm -hmm. and with all thy might. Okay, I see. Now go ahead and just read uh, 6 as a bonus. Go ahead. And these words mm -hmm. which I command thee this day mm -hmm. shall be in thine heart. Okay, so did he come with something new? Is that That's Old Testament, right? You're going to love your sure. thy God with all your heart, soul, might. Same thing, right? Sure. Then he mentioned something about thy neighbor, didn't he? So we can't ignore that. Let's go to Leviticus 19, please. We don't want to ignore it. We don't want to leave no stone unturned. Go to Leviticus 19. So, so far, the first great commandment is not new. Okay? So we're going to look at Leviticus 19, and let's go to verse 18. When you get that, brother, go ahead and read. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Now, something familiar is about to happen. Go ahead. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh huh. I am the Lord. Ah, love thy neighbor as thyself is not new either. Go to verse 34. Verse 34 in the same chapter. But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall mm -hmm. be unto you mm -hmm. as one born among you, mm -hmm. and thou shalt love him as thyself. So you can't be prejudiced or racist or treat anybody else different just because they're not Israel, right? That's a commandment. That's a commandment. It's not a suggestion. That's how you're supposed to treat your neighbor. And matter of fact, he even goes into a little bit of detail. He says, but the stranger that dwelleth with you, who in your community that's with you, your neighbor, okay, with you shall be unto you as one born among you. Treat him just like you treat an Israelite. That's a commandment. And thou shalt love him as thyself. Love him as thyself. For you are a stranger in the land of Egypt. So he even gave them some context. So he can say, you know what I mean when I say stranger. That's what he's saying. You know what I mean when I say stranger, because you were a stranger in Egypt. We know Israel came out of Egypt, right? OK, so, you know, and he said, I am the Lord, your God, because I said so. It's really that simple. That simple. Now, let's look at another example of love real quick. Let's go to first Samuel. Let's take a look at this real quick. Let's go up a few books. First Samuel 
18. Because they have a phileo love and a agape type love, a friendship type love, and then an all encompassing type love. But we're going to look at the friendship type love in 1 Samuel. Okay. Shemuel Aleph. 1 Samuel. And let's pick it up in verse 1. 1 Samuel, verse 1. We're going to read 1 through 5. Go ahead, brother. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul mm -hmm. that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. Yes. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Okay, so this is good friendship love. Okay, so Jonathan is the son of Saul, who was the first king of Israel. And he, this passage is just saying how close they were in friendship. Verse 2, brother. And Saul took him that day mm -hmm. and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Uh -huh. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant mm -hmm. because he loved him as his own soul. Yep. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David mm -hmm. and his garments, mm -hmm. even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. Mm -hmm. And David went out whatsoever Saul sent him and mm -hmm. behaved himself wisely. Mm -hmm. And Saul set him over the men of war and he was expected in the sight of all the people mm -hmm. and all in the sight of Saul's servants. Okay, so what, what I, I wanted to go there because I wanted you guys to see both David and um, David and Jonathan, okay, their friendship, okay? Now, if you read more of the story, you know, their friendship blossomed and everything, and then David tried, you know, was telling Jonathan, hey, you know, your dad's trying to kill me, you know, and Jonathan said, I don't know, but, you know, we'll test that out. And then, of course, David went to the field and he said, you show me a sign. You know, if my dad's after you, I'll do this. And if he's not, I'll do this sign and that kind of thing. But that's just to show you how close they were. Because didn't Christ said no greater love than this, okay, than a man lay down his life for his friend. Okay, so we're looking at friendship type stuff because sometime you might lose someone who is your family by blood. But someone who is simply a friend just might stick closer to you than that family member. It just may happen. Even Jesus himself had said when, when, when they were trying to come through the crowd and, and, and his mother and his brothers and all of them were trying to come to get his attention, but he was surrounded by the crowd and everything. And they said, hey, you know, Jesus, your mother and your brother, they are coming for you. They're trying to get your attention. And he says, who is my mother and my brother? It is they that keeps the commandments of God or does the will of my father. He is my mother or she is my mother and my brother. Because this sword that he's come, that's what happens. People have to make a decision. If they're going to go his way or they're going to continue their own way. And that's one of the things we have to remember, but we're still looking at this friendship type love. So go to Proverbs 18, if you don't mind. Proverbs 18 and 24. Let's look at this friendship type love. Proverbs 18, the last verse in that chapter. And let's see what verse 24 says. Proverbs 18 and 24. And when you get there, brother, let's go ahead and read that. Proverbs 18, 20 and 4. Mashali. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. Mm -hmm. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. It's possible. It's completely possible. That's what the word says. It is completely possible. And you want to know why that is? Because we don't choose our family, but we can choose our friends. That's why. And I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm not saying that. But I'm just pointing out the difference. You know, when you have that friend to the end, that's the kind of friend that's describing right here. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of things that the Lord wants us to do over in Luke 6. Let's walk this thing down. Luke 6. This lesson is about love one another. And it is not always easy, but the Lord didn't always ask us to do easy things. Amen? Okay, so Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. And let's read verse 26. Luke chapter 6. And verse 26. And when you get that, brother, go ahead and read. Woe unto you when all men 
shall speak well of you. Mm -hmm. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, mm -hmm. bless them that curse you, mm -hmm. and pray for them which despitefully use you. Now how hard is that, brothers and sisters? That's, that's pretty hard. But this is what he wants us to do. This is pretty difficult. You know, he said, Woe unto you, when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. So when everybody thinks you're, you know, you're just the greatest thing and they exalt you and they want to lift you up on their, on their shoulders, so to speak, or whatever, you might want to watch out. Because those who come preaching the truth, and when you look in the Bible, oftentimes, most of the time, we're rejected, right? Because the truth is hard, because it goes against your flesh. It goes against your tradition. It goes against the doctrines of man. And that's what upsets people. Why do you think so many people were upset with Christ when he came to correct them? They didn't like it. Why did you think they're upset? They didn't like it. He's turning over the tables and everything because he's messing up their profit center. He said, you know what? This is supposed to be a house of prayer. Not your get out of sin free cards at the market. So he said, watch out for that, you know. He said, but I say unto you, which here, anybody who's willing to listen, love your enemies. Okay, because you can't always return fire with fire. You can't always do that. And do good to them which hate you. I know that's hard. But he's trying to get people to get to, to develop the character like him. There's certain people and leaders he wants in the kingdom. This is the proving ground. This is it. So he's going to ask you something difficult, but this is it. Paul knows this ex uh, explicitly because he killing Christians, killing Messianics. And then he converted. And then he took a lot of abuse, right? So he knows firsthand. He was on the hateful side. And then he converted. So that's what we have to understand. We cannot always fight fire. Now, we can go to Ecclesiastes to everything. There's a season. But we cannot always fight fire with fire. Because if that was the case, then the firemen got it all wrong. Because they come with water. <laughs> you add fire on fire, where well, you're going to get a conflagration, okay? So you can't always fight fire with fire, okay? All right? So it says, no, read 28, brother. Go ahead. Bless them that curse you and uh -huh. pray for them which despitefully use you. Now, how many people go home at night, someone treats you wrong, and you go pray for them? You got to practice it. It's, it's hard. It's hard, okay? <laughs> it's hard, but you got give it, give it, to give it a shot. You got to, hey, you, pray that God help you, okay? Lord, you know I hate my coworker, but... Soften my heart, okay? Something, okay? But you, you, you got to you gotta give it a shot, okay? Pray for them. Bless them that curse you, and pray for them that despite, despitefully use you. 29, brother. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, mm -hmm. offer also the other. Mm -hmm. And him that taketh away thy cloak, mm -hmm. forbid not to take thy coat also. Forbid not to take that. You know what? You're gonna, okay, you want to do me like that? Okay, fine. You know what? Do what you have to do. Do what you must. Now, I know that the normal doctrine is, you know, turn the other cheek and all that. And I'm not going to argue with that because that's what the scripture says. But remember, we only have two cheeks on our face. So don't push somebody too far. OK, you only can turn twice. Don't push. Don't push. OK, don't test your limits. OK, so it says, you know, and unto him that smited thee on the cheek. Offer also the other cheek. That's where they get to turn the other cheek. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Cloak and then coat also. 30, brother. Give to every man that asketh of thee, mm -hmm. and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. Okay, go ahead. And as ye would that most... Sorry. And as ye would that men should do to you, mm -hmm. do ye also to them likewise. Uh, yeah, that's that, that do unto others as you would have them do unto you type thing. Go ahead. For if ye love them which, which love you, mm -hmm. what thank have ye? Yep. For sinners also love those that love them. See, that's what he's saying. See, if you want to be one of mine, let me, let, let me give you the hard part. See, what's the big deal for you loving someone who loves you back already? What's the challenge? 
There's there's no challenge to that. He said even sent for all, so sinners also love those that love them. That's no big deal. How about trying to love someone who doesn't love you? How about Christ loving us, the ones who reject him and he loving you anyway? How about that? How about the father going ahead and putting his son to death? Even when you reject his son. What about that? That's love. It's easy to love someone who loves you back. That's what we're talking about here. That's what we, we got to We got to put on our adult clothes. Stand up, be men and women and accept the challenge. Because that's what he's asking us to do. Go ahead, 33, brother. And if you do good to them, which do good to you, mm -hmm. what thank have you? Uh -huh. For sinners also do even the same. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. Is what he's saying. It's no big deal for you to love someone who loves you and treat well someone who treats you well. The challenge is treating someone well who doesn't treat you so good. That's the challenge. That's where the rubber meets the road, right? Okay, 34, brother. And if you lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? Yep. For sinners also lend to sinners. Yes, they do. To receive as much again. Yes, 35, brother. But love your enemies. Mm-hmm. And do good. Yep. And lend. Mm -hmm. Hoping for nothing again. You know what? A lot of times, I'll tell you right now, personally, some sometimes, I, some family members, not putting them down. Everyone needs help every now and again. But when I lend to them, I don't expect anything back. I don't tell them that, but I don't expect anything back. I just lend without expecting anything back. If, if it pays, if I can pay them back, I mean, if they pay me back, great. If not, but I also lend what I can afford not to get back. So that's something that you have to understand. So if you lend out something... Okay, you don't want to mortgage your future that if you don't get it back, you're destroyed. But just word of advice, don't expect it back and just give out what it would not kill you. Okay, if you don't get it back. That number, that's your own personal number, whatever that is. Okay, that's your personal situation. But that's how that's how I look at it. But love ye your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And continue. And your reward shall be great. Yes. And you shall be the children of the highest. Look at the kind of character that the Lord is trying to develop here before he calls us home. Look at the kind of character he's trying to develop. I told you, this is the proving ground. Go ahead, brother. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on. We're going to go to 1 John. Let's move forward to 1 John. 1 John. And we're going to go in chapter 3 of 1 John. Okay. The Lord, he asks us to do some, you know, he wants us to grow up. He wants us to develop. Okay. Before he gets here, he wants us to develop. Give a small little test to pass before he returns. First John, I want to pick it up at chapter 3. Are you guys with me? Yes, sir. Okay, First John chapter 3. Let's pick it up at verse 1, brother. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, mm -hmm. that we should be called the sons of God. Yes. There, therefore the world knoweth us not, mm -hmm. because it knew him not. That's right. Beloved. Now are we the sons of God, mm -hmm. and do it, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. That's right. But we know that when he shall appear, mm -hmm. we shall be like him. That's that new glorified body. Amen. Go ahead. For we shall see him as he is. Yes. And every man that hath this, this hope in him purifieth himself, mm -hmm. even as he is pure. That way, that way, because we have to purify ourselves as well. That means all that other stuff that we were doing before, we have to put that away. Anything that we were doing that was defiling us, we have to put that away. Any of the tradition that was idolatrous towards our Lord and towards our Savior, you got to put that away. 
That's how you purify yourself. You can't just, how can you purify yourself? Let's just say, example, you were a thief or something. You can't continue to steal. That's not purifying yourself. You got to put those things away, right? So he said, every man that has this hope in him. So if you hope to get salvation, okay, if you hope to get to uh, have a body like him and to see him face to face and expect to be like him, you purify yourself even as he is pure. Uh, verse four. Whosoever committed sin mm -hmm. transgresseth also the law. This is the definition. Go ahead. <laughs> For sin is a transgression of the law. Go ahead. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, mm -hmm. and in him is no sin. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Yes. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, mm -hmm. neither known him. And that's making a practice of sin, okay? So don't let someone come along and tell you, see, if you sin, but everyone sin. Yes, everyone has sin. But we're talking about your relationship to sin. How do you feel about it now? Are you nonchalant about it now? Or are you trying to crucify your flesh every day and say, I don't, I don't want to do that, Lord. Help me, deliver me from this particular sin or whatever it is. So don't let someone tell you, well, see, well, you can't keep the law or whatever. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. We have to try to purify ourselves and we have to put away those things that kept us separate from God. So that's what we have to do. So whosoever abides, stay in him sinneth not. You don't just make a practice uh, of sin. If you sin, you know it's a sin, and you are repentant, meaning you turn away. That's what he's looking for, a repentant heart. Read the Psalms. Look at when David messed up in his attitude towards sin and towards God. So it's not a matter of, well, you know, uh, you can't keep those commandments and you can't do that. Well, there isn't, Messiah aside, there isn't a figure in the Bible that didn't sin and yet they were still called holy and righteous and just and okay so don't let anybody fool you okay don't let anyone fool you with that put the Messiah aside and point out someone else in this Bible who did no sin whatsoever or does the Bible say all have sinned yes, it does. now it can you go in the Bible and you can find places where it says okay this person was righteous this person was holy this person was just this person pleased God right so don't let someone fool you with that. Okay, verse 7, brother. Little children, mm -hmm. let no man deceive That's you. That's exactly what I was just saying. Go ahead. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, yes. even as he is righteous. Yes, sir. He that committed sin is of the devil. Yes. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Mm -hmm. For this purpose the Son of God was mm -hmm. manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Go ahead, brother. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Yes, sir. For his seed remaineth in him mm -hmm. and he cannot sin that's right go ahead because he is born of god mm -hmm. in this the children of god are manifest this is how you know the difference but go ahead brother and the children of the devil whosoever doeth not righteousness mm -hmm. righteousness is not of god neither he that loveth not his brother mm -hmm. for this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning see go ahead that we should love one another yes yeah, see that was from the beginning it's not really new he's just saying it in a new way Okay, that's it. We're just let, let me just sum up all the commandments. Okay, half of it is about loving God. The other half of it is about loving thy neighbor. Okay, that's really summing it up. Okay, this is what we had from the beginning. Okay, 12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, mm -hmm. and slew his brother. Mm -hmm. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, mm -hmm. and his brother's righteous. That's right. Marvel not. My brethren, if the world hates you, yes, we know that we have passed from death unto life, yes, because we love the brethren, yes. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. You cannot be someone who hates people because you're going to be in for a rude awakening when you get into the kingdom because there's people going to be there. So you can't just, you, you have to develop a love for the people. Your heart has to break for people and not just those who are in your family not just those you love already pray for them they won't listen to you okay pray for them you can't keep beating them over the head with the bible but you can pray for them no one can stop you from praying continue brother 
whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Yes. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Check out that lesson it's called, you know, that we call Hebrew hatred or whatever. You cannot hate and have hate in your heart and then it just permeate, permeates through everything that you do and everything that you say and it manifests into racism or manifests against hatred against your own brother or something. You cannot get in the kingdom. I submit to you that a lot of people are going to be cut off just because of hate. Just because of hate. That's it. We're commanded to love. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. Now, we, we, we know Christ said that, you know, you heard the commandment say that thou shalt commit no murder. But I say unto you, he that hated his brother without a cause already committed murder in his heart, right? That's what he's talking about right here. This is whoever, um, he didn't say murder, okay? He started with hate. He flipped it. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. I didn't write this. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Be careful of that. Someone does you wrong, I mean, get restitution, get justice, whatever, and then get over it. Don't die with hate in your heart. Go ahead, Brother 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Yes. Because he laid down his life for us. Yes. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Yes. But whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need mm -hmm. and shut up up his bowels of compassion from mm -hmm. him, mm -hmm. how dwelleth the love of God in him? How, how dwelleth the love of God in him? So if I'm hungry and I come to one of the brothers and sisters, you know, and I'm hungry and you say, well, you know, I'll pray for you, brother. I know we're struggling. You know, I'll, I'll just pray for you. How about you pray over a sandwich and give that to me? OK, do something for me. Help me. I need something. I need sustenance and prayer. OK, so that's what he's saying. But whosoever has this world's goods and see his brother have need and shut it up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? How how's how's that loving? You have the means, but you don't help. This is the kind of character that we're talking about. So even this love can be a hard truth, too, now, can it? We talk about commandments and stuff, but even love can be pretty hard, too. Mm -hmm. You got to manifest this thing. Because I know a lot of times we'll be, we teach these lessons, and after you look at them, oh, oh, they say, oh, man, that's kind of rough. That's kind of hard. Well, what about the love? Well, we're talking about love now. <laughs> Still the same tone. Okay? Still the same tone. Verse 18, brother. My little children, mm -hmm. let us not love in word, uh -huh. neither in tongue, uh -huh. but in deed and in truth. Now, is love mm -hmm. an action word or not? Yes. Love is an action word. It says right there, my little children, let us not love in word and tongue, but in deed and in truth. So is so that feeling? No, that's not enough. The feeling can accompany it, but the feeling is not the substance. I feel love. Well, you should feel that, okay, after the action. You should put your love to action. You do it with your kids, you do it with your spouse, you need to do it with your God, and you need to do it with your brethren. That has to come with action. 19. And hereby we know that we are of the truth. Yep. And shall assure our hearts before him. Go ahead. For if our heart condemn us, mm -hmm. God is greater than our heart. Yes. And knoweth all things. Yes. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, mm -hmm. then have we confidence toward God. Yes. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him mm -hmm. because he, we keep his commandments mm -hmm. and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Read 22 again, brother. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him mm -hmm. because we keep his commandments mm -hmm. and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. All right. So first, if you don't want to obey God, you got nothing coming. Okay. That's the first thing that we need to do. What got the nation of Israel cut off? Disobedience. So we need to obey God, and when we're trying to obey God to the very best of our ability, then you're free to ask him. 
whatever you need. Even in James, he said, you know, you have not because you ask not. But the reason you don't have because you ask amiss. Get your house in order. Get your, and I mean your personal house, your character, your being, who you are. Get that in order. Then ask God. If you have some hate or something, get rid of that hate. Then ask God. You and your wife have a problem, an issue, an argument. Uh -uh -uh. He said, don't even come to the temple. Don't come to the altar or anything. Straighten it out. Then come back. So that your prayers be not hindered. This is some character stuff that he's trying to get into us. To develop in us. This is what he's trying to do. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. So helping someone is pretty pleasing in his sight. Obeying him is pretty pleasing in his sight. Honoring and hallowing his Sabbath day is pretty pleasing in his sight. You understand what I'm saying? Verse 23, brother. And this is his commandment, mm -hmm. that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another mm -hmm. as he gave us commandment. 24, brother. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, yes. and he in him. Mm -hmm. And hereby we know that he abideth in us mm -hmm. by the spirit which he had given us. This is how we know. That's how he identifies us. Let's go to the next chapter. We're in First John. Let's go to chapter 4. Chapter 4. Okay. Chapter 4. And this time we're going to start at verse Seven, chapter four, verse seven. And when you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Mm -hmm. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Mm -hmm. He that loveth not knoweth <clears throat> sorry. He that loveth not knoweth not God, mm -hmm. for God is love. Mm -hmm. In this was manifested the love of God toward us mm -hmm. because that God sent his only begotten son into the world yes that we might live through him so he's given an example of what he done he's done all these things first okay created the world the heavens and the earth and everything created us showed love unto us first and then he comes along and said I need you to obey me and stop idol worship oh and by the way I need you to love your brethren love one another but he, he made all the first moves. He made all the first moves. And so he's asking us, so he's leading by example, right? Yes. Made all the first moves first. Okay? So go ahead, brother. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and yes. has sent his son to mm -hmm. be the propitiation of our sins. Yes, that's love. Herein is love. Okay? Not that we love God, but that he loved us. I mean, we didn't love him first. OK, but he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. He's the payment for our sin. He's the atonement for our sins. Verse 11, brother. Beloved, if God so loved us, mm -hmm. we ought also to love one another. Mm -hmm. No man had seen God at any time. Mm -hmm. If we love one another, mm -hmm. God dwelleth in us mm -hmm. and his love is perfected in us. That's why that's why we use terms like, you know, Christ like, you know, because we should see a form of Christ in one another, at least an aspect of love. We should see that in one another. We should demonstrate that and we should see it in the brethren. That's why we should love one another. Could you open that door a little bit? Beloved, if God so loved us, see, he's putting God first, we ought also to love one another, okay? That's why he said that. No man has seen the Father at any time, so none of us stood face to face with the Father at any time, and if we love one another, then God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. 13, brother. Hereby know that we dwell in him uh -huh. and he in us mm -hmm. because he hath given us of his spirit. Yes, go ahead. And we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. Yes, go ahead. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, yes. God dwelleth in him mm -hmm. and he in God. See, this is one of the things that we have to understand because during this New Testament age right here, this first century here, okay, you got what's happening. Uh, you got the advent of messianics not everybody accepted 
the Messiah, okay? The same one, you know, in Isaiah 53. No one accepted the suffering servant. No one accepted the fact that he was manifested right there. Not everybody accepted the fact that Messiah, that Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach, was the Messiah. But they're trying to say this is the one that Daniel was talking about. This is the one that Isaiah was talking about. This is the guy. And so we're trying to tell you he is the propitiation of our sin. Let's believe in him and love one another. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. 16, brother. And we have known and be believed the love that God has to us. Mm -hmm. God is love. Yes, he is. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God uh -huh. and God in him. Go ahead. Herein is our love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Yes. Because as he is, mm -hmm. so are we in this world. Yes, sir. Go ahead. There is no fear in love, mm -hmm. but perfect love casteth out fear. Yes, it does. Because fear hath torment. Mm -hmm. He that feareth is not made of perfect love. Okay, so if we have love and, and our hope and our hope is in eternal life, living in the kingdom, that is love. So that one day we know that our body is going to return back to the dust. But we don't fear that because we know what's going to happen after. But those without God, if torment is waiting for you on the other side, there's a lot of fear. There should be a lot. I mean, you know, some people are going to go there. They don't know. But the ones who just outright reject God. And I'm not talking about just atheists. I'm talking about like non-Messianics or people who are serving the idolatrous God you know the other Jesus Paul talks about when you serve in the wrong way you serve in the wrong Messiah then there's fear okay but there is no fear in love but perfect love casts it out fear because fear has torment fear does have torment he that feared is not made perfect in love 19 brother we love him mm -hmm. because he first loved us okay so we understand he loved us first he didn't wait for us to fall in love with him, and then he said, okay, well, I, I guess I'll die for you. <laughs> no. That was all, it was already preordained, okay? Already preordained, okay? Verse 20, brother. If a man say, I love God, mm -hmm. and hateth his brother, he is a liar. What? Wait a minute. Read that again. I, you, you had to mess up there. Go ahead, read 20 again. If a man say, I love God uh -huh. and hateth his brother, mm -hmm. he is a liar. So guess what? We cannot think we are in this truth and at the same time hate our brother. You can't do it. Cannot do it. Because one brother rocks a beard, the other one doesn't. Can't hate him. Because if you think your hate is justified, you're a liar. Okay, you are a liar. Finish that, brother. For he that loveth not his brother, mm -hmm. whom he hath, who he has seen, yep. how can he love God whom he hath not seen? See, this is why God, he asks us to do some tough stuff. See, how can you say you love me who you never seen, but you can't even love your brother who's right there who you can see? How can you do that? Because your brother might need something for, from you. He might need some kindness and some patience or some prayer or something to eat or maybe a job. He might need something and you can do something. We can't really do a whole lot for God. Doesn't really need it. He's going to go on whether we do something for him or not, right? So the test is right here. He's giving you every opportunity to demonstrate your love. You know, the one you say you have for him. Okay, do it to your brother. You love him? Okay. You love me? Okay. I'm telling you, help your brother. I'm telling you not to hate your brother or your sister. Do that. Try not hating them. How about that? There's your test. 21, brother. And this commandment have we from him, mm -hmm. that he who loveth God mm -hmm. love his brother also. That's really plain and simple now, is it? Plain and simple. Not hard to understand. But see, we got to do it. This is an action word. Everything we've been reading has been action. Now, has everything we've been reading just been feeling and touchy feel? Just how, oh, I just feel it doesn't, you know, that, that can be there. That can accompany it. But it's action. 
that can be there. That, that, that feeling, that's good because that can propel you to go further. That's fine. But it's nothing if it doesn't have action to it. Because a lot of times it's for you, that love. It's for you. You feeding your brother or your sister, that's for you. It benefits them, but that's for you because he's watching you. That's what the opportunity is, and we have to understand that opportunity. Can I help my brother get a job, or you know, should, should I feed him? Or, you know, I got a coat I'm not using. He's cold. Hey, here you go, brother. You know, something. You understand? Let's go to 1 John 5, chapter 5. Go to the next chapter. We're, we're all over John. 1 John 5. And pick it up at verse 1, brother. 1 John 5 and verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Yes. And everyone that loveth him that begot loveth that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. Go ahead. By this we know that we love the children of God. Yes. When we love God mm -hmm. and keep his commandments. That's the test, guys. It's right there in black and white. That's the test. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Go ahead. For this is the love of God. Yes. That we keep his commandments. Uh -huh, but, his, but, but, they're too, but they're too hard. We cannot do that. It's burdensome. You know, what does it say? And his commandments are not grievous. Oh, okay. So whoever told you they were burdensome didn't read this part. Okay. This is not even the Big Ten kind of lesson. You know, we got plenty of lessons about that. It's not even about that. But let me ask you something. First four commandments. Okay, first four commandments. Who does that have to do with? No. God. You should have no other God before me. They're right here. You should have no other God before me. Don't take my name in vain. You know, that. keep the Sabbath is the fourth one. That's how you love him. What about the last six? Who's that loving? Your neighbor. Honor thy mother and father. Don't lie. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't covet. Right? False no false witness. It's just loving one another. It's always been about love. It has always been about love from the beginning. It said this is the commandment you had from the beginning, right? It's always been about that, brothers and sisters. Always. But the Lord wants us to put it into action now. We have to do something about it, okay? And go ahead, let's give four, uh, verse four, before we move on. Verse four, go ahead. For whatsoever is born of God mm -hmm. overcometh the world. Mm -hmm. And this is a victory that overcometh the world, mm -hmm. even our faith. Because that, that's the answer. See, the faith. Faith is what overcomes the world. Why are you doing all these things? Because of your faith. Why do I do this? I have faith in Christ. I have faith in the Messiah. That's why I do this. I'm loving because I have faith in Christ. I'm loving the Father because I have faith in Christ. I'm loving my brethren because I have faith in Christ. Because he, he commanded me to do so. He wants me to be obedient. And that's what I plan on doing. Because of my faith. Also an action. Which is also an action. Yes, sir. Which is also an action. Now, I want, I want us to do a test real quick. Let's go to... Uh, uh, we got one scripture. And then I want to get the first Corinthians. So go to Second John. Very next book. Go to Second John. And it is only one chapter. And we're going to read verse... Six. Okay. Second John verse six. Go ahead, brother. And this is love. Yes. That we walk after his commandments. Uh-huh. That this is the commandment mm -hmm. that as ye have heard from mm -hmm. the beginning, yes. ye should walk in it. Let me ask you guys something. Is walk an action word? Yes. Walk is physically doing something, right? Why does he see you see why he used that word? Walk? You automatically don't imagine someone standing still when you hear the word walk. It's an action word. That's what it, that's all he's trying to do. And I want I want to point something else out too, real quick over in first Corinthians 13. Some of us are very familiar with that chapter. So let's take a look at it. Let's deal with it. Let's do a little self test in first Corinthians. Chapter 13. OK. Now, just 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 so you guys know, charity 
is translated love, okay? Charity means love. You go to your Strong's, go to your Bible dictionary, charity, love, interchangeable, okay? And in some versions, actually, if you go to another version, instead of saying charity, it's going to say love, okay? So go 1 Corinthians 13. Now, let's take a look at this. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians 13, and we're pretty much going to read the whole cha uh, the chapter, but we're going to pick up, we're going to do a self-test, okay? 1 Corinthians 13. Go ahead, brother, and let the Bible speak. Though I speak with the tongues of men uh -huh. and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass mm -hmm. or a tinkling cymbal. Okay, now he just said, now he just said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Go ahead. And though I have the gift of prophecy uh -huh. and understand all mysteries mm -hmm. and all knowledge, mm -hmm. and though I have have all faith yep. so that I could remove mountains yes. and have not charity, mm -hmm. I am nothing. So if I don't have love, I have nothing. If I don't have charity, if I don't have love, I have nothing. He said all these wonderful things he had, but if I don't have love, I have nothing. Okay? That's what we have to understand. That's how important it is. Thir uh, verse 3, brother. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, yep. and though I give my body to be burned, yep. and have not charity, mm -hmm. it profiteth me nothing. If I don't have love, it profiteth me nothing. So love is serious now, isn't it? Love just got real. It just got real in here. Go ahead. Verse 4. Charity suffereth long. Charity suffereth long. And is kind. Yes. Charity envieth not. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunt vaunteth not. Vaunteth not itself uh -huh. and is, is not puffed up. Uh-huh. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Uh-huh. Seeketh not her own mm -hmm. and is not easily provoked. Mm-hmm. Think is no evil. Okay, see, our disposition can't be that of evil all the time. We can't be spiteful and vengeful all the time. We can't be puffed up all the time. Where's the humility? Where's the meekness? You can do all the stuff you want to do. If you don't have love with it, profit you nothing. That's, that's what the scripture says, so it's not me. Go ahead, brother. Rejoice it. Not in iniquity, mm -hmm. but rejoiceth in the truth. Yes. Bear with all things, believeth all things, mm -hmm. hopeth all things, mm -hmm. endureth all things. Mm -hmm. Charity never faileth, mm -hmm. but whether there be prophecies, they shall they shall fail. Mm -hmm. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Mm -hmm. Whether there is knowledge, it shall vanish away. Okay, now, I want you guys to do it, because we're, we're going to finish the chapter, but here's our self-test. Everywhere that it says charity... Put yourself there. Put your name in that same spot. We're going to go back up to verse 1. Now you watch this. I want to, I want to show you something. And for this purpose, I'll, put, I'll use my name. And that will tell us whether or not we have some work to do. Okay? So let's go back to 1. Okay? And it says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, okay, love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have no charity or love, I am nothing. Now it's coming. Watch this. And though I bestow all my, good, my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Robert suffereth long and is kind. Robert envieth not. Robert vaunted not itself, he is not puffed up, okay? Does not, uh, d does not behave, or Robert does not behave uh, itself unseemly, seeketh not his own, is not easily provoked, and thinketh no evil, okay? Now, if, this does, if you put your name in there and it doesn't quite fit, and you're like, well, then you got work to do, right? That's what it means. It just means we got work to do, Okay? Rejoices not in Robert rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Robert bears all things, believe all things, hope all things, endureth all things. Robert never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Now let's try it like this. I'm going to skip a little bit. Let's go back up to verse 4. Watch this. Jesus suffereth long and is kind. True? True. 
Jesus envied not. Jesus vaunted, vaunted not himself, True. is not puffed up, True. does not behave himself unseemly, True. seeketh not his own, is not easily provoked, and he thinketh no evil. He doesn't rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. He bears all things. Jesus believe all things. He hopes all things, endures all things. Jesus never faileth. Does that fit? So that means we got work to do, right? Plain and simple. That's our self-test. You put your name in there and uh, shaky. But you put Messiah's name in there. Good example. You say, you know what? I have some work to do. Right? So let's go on over to verse 9 and continue. Go ahead. For we know in part mm -hmm. and we prophesy in part. Yes. But when... But when that which is perfect is come, yes. then that which is in part shall mm. be done away. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, I spake as a child, mm -hmm. I understood as a child, mm -hmm. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, yes. I put away childish things. Go ahead. For now we see through a glass darkly, yes. but then face to face, mm -hmm. no I know in part. Yes. But then shall I know even as also I am known. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And now abideth faith. Hope, mm -hmm. charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. But the greatest of these is charity. See, now we have a little bit of understanding there. Now, he already said we see through the glass darkly, and he says we know in part, we prophesy in part. Doesn't mean we know everything. We're not going to have everything figured out. But to him, much is given, much is required. So you're going to go according to your understanding, to your level of understanding. That's, that's, that's all he wants you to do. Operate at your level, get it down, and then move on to get a little bit more. Step by step by step by step by step. Because you sinned step by step by step by step. Every sin you ever committed, you didn't commit it all in one day. So for this righteousness, you got to walk in that over time. And he chiefly wants us to walk in love. Does that make sense? Yes, he chiefly wants us to walk in love. Does everyone, does everyone need a five minute break because we got a lot more to cover all right so i hope you've been edified by this lesson this is only part one join us for part two and until next time search the scriptures improve all things